Hello YouTube, I am Roger Keep It Simple RC, and today we're addressing the character concerns of another NFL rookie. You know how we operate. We're taking prospects with question marks from the 2022 NFL Draft, who may or may not have been drafted, and we're diving into their history to understand why they were marked as red flags. Most of what we report is fact-based, but from time to time, we'll switch over to an interpretation of the story, at least my interpretation. Now, when that happens, we let you know up front because unlike big money journalists, we're not making money to draw your attention to the channel. The sad truth is we're not getting paid at all. We just wanna give you an accurate representation of the man behind the uniform and the environment that shapes him. We're not working with an agent to brainwash you into believing one way or the other about someone. So before I go on, for those folks that like to react before hearing the full story, I don't want to hear your hate speech. Okay. I'm not going to jump into a debate with you having only a quarter of the story. For those of you that get through the entire episode, well, your hate speech is welcome. You see, this channel will continue to evolve, to evolve, excuse me. And your comments, believe it or not, they help shape how we present the facts. So we're not going to go and leave out details just to fit a narrative. You know, we'll leave that to the professionals that are broadcasting over the cable networks. What we will do is enhance the perspective of our viewing audience. Also, be sure to drop a like and a comment on the name of a rookie of interest that you'd like us to dig up the dirt on, right? And we'll discuss that on a future show. All right, let's get into it. Welcome to Red Flags, where we share the nasty details that went into a rookie's drop in value. I am Roger, Keep It Simple RC, and on today's show, we're diving into the character concerns of New York Giants' first round pick, Kayvon Thibodeau. What we're going to share with you guys is information cobbled together from various sources. Kayvon Thibodeau, was born December 15th in the year 2000 to Angelo Thibodeau and Shante Lois in South Central Los Angeles, California. Now I'm gonna call her Shante because I'm not sure of the pronunciation. So if anyone has a correct pronunciation, certainly reach out to me, let me know. If I'm not saying it right, my apologies to you, Shante. I'll try to do better next time. Anyways. There are no reports of Angelo taking part in Kayvon's upbringing, aside from the occasional mention of him tinkering with a 90, 1995 Ford Mustang. Now that was Kayvon's first car after getting his driver's license at 16. Now only Ms. Lois participated in raising the young sack master, acting as both parent and agent the whole way up until this year, when Mr. Thibodeau agreed to be represented by Kelton Crenshaw who is an agent for Clutch Sports Group. Now, Shantae found it necessary to take on these roles in the early goings for a myriad of reasons, sometimes out of love and other times out of necessity. You see, growing up, Kayvon experienced a physical advantage over his peers. He'd draw fury from other parents for out-muscling kids at birthday parties whenever a pinata released sugary treats or for standing six foot two at the ripe old age of 13 and being challenged on his age. His fifth grade teacher, Antonio Patterson, took notice of this young man and urged him to sign up for Pop Warner. But even in Pop Warner, Mr. Thibodeau found himself getting kicked out of games to ensure the safety of the other children. I mean, that's how big this guy was. 
So imagine he's towering over these other kids. You're thinking he's got to be in high school and he's running around with other 13 year olds. Only one child was intimidating enough to send young Kayvon running in the opposite direction. That child's name was Chucky from the Universal Studios Halloween Horror Nights or from the movie Child's Play. In any case, coaches from wealthy high schools, they started recruiting Kayvon when he was in middle school. His mother would find herself in meetings with these schools. And this is where Ms. Lois found herself first acting as Kayvon's sports agent. But the decision on where to enroll Mr. Thibodeau became easy for the family because his fifth grade teacher, Mr. Patterson, had a son, Justin, who happened to enroll at Juniper Sarah High School. Just so happens that Justin would, was Kayvon's best friend at the time. That and the fact that the coaches from Juniper had attended a ton of Kayvon's Pop Warner games. So, Shantae Lois enrolled her son at Juniper Sarah in the fall of 2015. But there was a problem for Kayvon. He had to sit on the JV team because five-star recruit Oluwale Bedeku was starring for the Padres at defensive end. Now, Bedeku went on to play for the Illini, but that's pretty much where his career ended. Now, to add insult to injury, Shantae Lois was forced to transfer Kayvon towards the end of his freshman season, well, the end of his freshman football season. And he was transferred to the alma mater of none other than Keyshawn Johnson, who went to school at Dorsey High School in South Los Angeles. So she moved into a new apartment in South Los Angeles, further away from Juniper. So it was gonna be hard for her to commute, drop him off at that school, and pretty much just do that every day. So they were forced to transfer to Dorsey. And, you know, since Mr. Thibodeau, he couldn't drive himself. Again, they were left with no choice but to transfer. So, Shantae made sure her son was protected in every way because Dorsey High is a public high school. As a matter of fact, it was one of the premier public high schools for athletics back when Keyshawn Johnson was playing. That was before wealthy private schools started poaching talent, leaving Dorsey with the scraps, effectively. You know, those were the people who couldn't make the grades or they just sucked. Anyways. The time at Dorsey actually left a big impression on young Kayvon because he wasn't about to be outdone by his mother's protective hold. He felt compelled to nurture and protect his community if ever fortune struck. So Mr. Thibodeau, he starred on the Dorsey High School football team. He caught notice because he compiled a ton of sacks in a very short span of time. <coughs> but being big and strong not only attracted the attention of recruiters, it also attracted the unwanted attention of the local disenfranchised youth. You know, the ones, the ones who were expected to accept their legal, social, and economic disadvantages and then be excoriated for resisting while bearing witness to a society that rewards bankers who continue to defraud the most humble of us. But thankfully, Mr. Thibodeau's football competency afforded him another opportunity. Dorsey High was no longer that prominent college recruiting stop. Again, because either kids couldn't keep up the grades or they just outright sucked. What Dorsey High did, what happened to Dorsey High was it morphed into a prominent high school recruiting stop for private schools. You know, the ones, the, the private schools that charge 
a yearly tuition approaching upwards of $30,000. Again, that's annually. So Kayvon Thibodeau, he was offered full financial aid to attend Oaks Christian High School in Westlake Village. But it wasn't until Kayvon earned his driver's license that Ms. Lois could make the decision to take him out of South Central. She understood that school in the inner city was not intellectually challenging to the students it served. She understood that a six foot five man child could easily be drawn into a life of pronounced lawlessness. Kayvon often found himself with an abundance of free time at Dorsey. He would easily complete all his school assignments and that helped him maintain a 4.0 GPA. What was left to fill those pockets of time was a barbaric environment for, for young uh, Kayvon. Now, this was made consistently worse by wealthy schools drowning the football talent out of the community. So again, college recruiters, they don't have that much of an incentive to go back to Dorsey to recruit talent because they know either the kids, they suck at football or they're not gonna be able to keep up their grades, which means they won't be able to participate in the athletics in college. So in 2017, Ms. Lois accepted the financial aid and enrolled her son at Oaks Christian. That's where Kayvon Thibodeau took on a newer and healthier, more creative challenge. <clears throat> it came in the form of a stronger curriculum, which translated to fewer pockets of free time for him. But Mr. Thibodeau met that challenge by earning a GPA above 3.5. The football program was a safe space for college recruiters. It was a place where they knew the talent could make the grades needed to fully participate in team play throughout the season. Ms. Lois and Kayvon found themselves flooded by mail, emails, phone calls, all from recruiters across the country. It gotten to be so overwhelming for Kayvon that he delivered a tweet that read the following. Call slash text my mom if you want any information that has to do with me. Don't ask me, don't ask anyone else, just my mom. Now around 30 competing schools were courting the young superstar. Check out this list of schools. You had Florida State, Alabama, LSU, Notre Dame, Stanford, Texas, USC, Washington, and of course, Oregon. Along the way, Mr. Thibodeau took advantage of his recruiting visits to see Alabama's 16th Street Baptist Church that was bombed by the Ku Klux Klan in the 60s. And while at Florida State, he snuck away to nearby A&M to see the archives for African American history, archives that focus on contributions to politics, science, education, and athletics. Ultimately, the 2019 graduate of Oaks Christian selected Oregon. And that's where his trajectory continued to point upwards. That is, until June 30th, 2021, when the name, image, and likeness policy was approved by the NCAA. That's when Kayvon Thibodeau's star began to fade just a smidge he signed a massive contract with United Airlines on a private memorabilia deal, and then Kayvon collaborated with Nike founder Phil Knight to create NFT artwork. Mr. Thibodeau also launched his own cryptocurrency that year. With these endeavors, Kayvon Thibodeau's effort began to come into question. NFT, excuse me, NFL teams were quoted as saying he doesn't play with the same fire as other prospects. He was vocal about how he viewed football as a platform for off the field interests. That turned some people off. Then came the NFL Combine, where Mr. Thibodeau participated in the 40 
and a 225 pound bench press before he packed up his bags and left. This caused folks like Willie McGinnis on NFL Network to question his passion. And honestly, I believe it was his performance at the Combine that cost him the opportunity to go number one overall. Not because he ran a bad 40, not because he didn't do well on the bench press, but because he didn't participate in all of the activities that were there. And NFL scouts don't like that. Obviously, NFL scouts, they have a different level of expectation of players. They don't understand is that football and the NFL is constantly evolving. And a lot of these folks have that mindset, that old school mindset, and they're not evolving just as quickly as the talent around them. So no one ever questioned Kayvon's aptitude. He's always been a smart guy. With the new NIL deals, it threw a new wrinkle into the scouting process for NFL teams. Like I said, scouts like to scout, scouts like to scout players who play for the love of the game, right? They wanna know who's playing for the love of the game and who's doing it for the money. The NIL threw a monkey wrench in that logic because the growing consensus for Kayvon Thibodeau became money was a big distraction. And with that, I'm gonna to get to the ruling. Is Kayvon Thibodeau a prima donna? Does he have a problem with his motor? Is he overly concerned with his brand and will it affect his level of play on the field? I'll say this about him. Kayvon Thibodeau is a smart young man. He's had to face a lot of adversity in his young life. And with each new challenge, he's come out ahead. The NIL is a blessing to the NFL because it is going to reveal the true character of aspiring professionals much sooner than what they had before. The problem with it is that in the short term, there's gonna be an adjustment period. And that's what recruiters, scouts are going to learn when they look at Kayvon Thibodeau. Because scouts need to reconsider their approach when scouting talent. For Kayvon, his enthusiasm for building wealth to help his community was viewed as a negative. Teams, teams couldn't process that Mr. Thibodeau understands the importance of improving his play while building a portfolio. There are numerous examples of people juggling different interests and experiencing success. Elon Musk comes to mind. The problem for scouts is they can't believe that an athlete is capable of juggling several careers. The mindset is this, if I can't do it, you can't either. And that is what teams will discover is inherently wrong. Jacksonville decided to gamble in the draft. They decided to bet on a projection. They believed that the obvious talent of Kayvon would disappear after the ink dried. And with that, another opportunity opened up for Kayvon Thibodeau. He escaped the NFL's version of purgatory in the form of Jacksonville Jaguars. Of the Jacksonville Jaguars, excuse me. Now, he has the chance to broaden his brand in the mecca of wealth and access, New York City. I don't believe Mr. Thibodeau has a problem with his motor. I believe that Kayvon Thibodeau will become a dominant presence in the NFL. And the field of professionals who criticized him will discover a new world order in today's NFL. A world where obedient warriors have been replaced by intelligent mercenaries. 
thank you for sticking around. Don't forget to like the video. And again, this is Roger, Keep It Simple RC, and we'll see you on the next ride.